Well, welcome back gamers, hackers, coders, and everything between. I'm Brandon Blackburn, and we're just getting started. So let's be a little bit uh, flexible with how we do our scream schedule and you know all that other good stuff. So this week, I thought I'd just kick it off with a big Lollapalooza, whatever you want to call it. There's so many words. <laughs> but this one, I wanted to just get get the content out there, get you guys aware of who I am, um, say hello to my audience that uh, was you know, good enough to stand by me even uh, over my hiatus during the COVID stuff. And um, yeah, just get back out there and get started. So today, we're going to be playing some games that say they're about hacking, but we're going to find out whether they really are or not. And full disclosure, I personally have not played these games yet. I have literally just installed them, started them up, and then closed them back down. That's literally all I've done. So while we're at it, I'm going to go ahead and just verify some quick stream health things on my end. All right, everything looks good. So let's go ahead and kick things off. I'm going to switch over to uh, one tiny little detail. Just bear with me, brief second. Call it the uh, CYA. The information contained in this presentation and its website, bhacks.net, the service, are for general information purposes only. It is a felony to access or modify a computer system without written permission from that system's owner. To be safe, if you did not purchase the physical device, then you must have written permission beforehand. All right, yeah, just a little bit of housekeeping. And in case you guys are wondering, maybe you're new to the show, I am Brandon Blackburn. I am a network penetration tester, but you probably know a better term, hacker. And that's just the professional term for a hacker is network penetration tester. We do exactly what you might think, but not in the manner you might think. We basically get permission from people who own different systems in order to hack their systems on their behalf. We do what a hacker would do, except we just keep track of what we're doing, when we do it, how we do it, and then we work with them to put the thing back together if for some reason something went wrong. Um, because naturally, if you're hacking into something, there's always that chance that you might just break it in a way that the owner didn't expect. But hey, if it breaks it, that's a finding too. So that's exactly what I do. And uh, I also do a lot of automation. I do coding. I do um, pretty much anything full stack that you can think of. And so, yeah, and then in the spare time, gaming. What spare time there is. <laughs> so that is what I do, and I just thought you guys should know. So let's get started. We're going to switch over to the desktop real quick. All right, so we need to get uh, Steam fired up here. Now, before we get too far into it, I did want to try and get some sort of criteria together. So while we're at it, let's take a look at some possible criteria. Wait, is that how you spell criteria? Cry, tear, eh, we'll just, you know what I mean. <laughs> I have dyslexia. No, no, really, I actually do have dyslexia. Um, so mm -hmm. the criteria for this should be believability maybe? I don't know. How about authenticity? So authenticity would be one. And then how about, well, let's see. Some, some good possible criteria to use for this is what I'm working on here. Authenticity and, you know, it's almost like that word sums up a lot of it in one shot. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm not even gonna, like I said, we're just winging this as we go along. So there's gonna be a bunch of uh, just sort of seeing what sticks sort of things. So we're just gonna go and grade it based on authenticity. Um, if there's another criterion that comes along, then we can use that. But for now, it's just authenticity. And that's based on my personal and professional opinion. So take it for what you will. We're gonna be starting off with what looks like Hacknet. So Hacknet. All right, so let's get started. I'm kind of nervous about this, so bear with me. We're gonna be just figuring this out as I go along. So new session, I guess. Yeah, sure. Username, Blackburn. Password. Uh, details confirmed. Once created, a session's language cannot be changed. Ready, press enter to confirm. Okay. All right, Hacknet Terminal, looking at VM page bootstrap, free pages, virtual machines. So I'll give them credit. They're including things like PCI configuration in there. I don't know if that was just iWash or if it was actually doing anything, but hey, that's what it is. 14 day timer expired initializing fail safe. This is a strange Stranger than I, this is strange, stranger than I expected. I guess I'm supposed to write this in past tense, though I hardly feel like I'm admitting it's over. My name is Bit, and if you're reading this, I'm already dead, ooh. All right, loading modules, modules complete, loading nodes, reticulating splines, that's garbage from uh, SimCity. If you've ever played SimCity in the past, it's it's a it's just garbage. <laughs> tutorial. As of right now, you are at risk. Learn as quickly as possible. Begin the tutorial sequence by pressing the continue button below. Okay. Connect to a computer by typing connect and then IP in the terminal or by clicking a node on the terminal map. Connect to your own computer. Okay. So I'll give them credit. They have a textual input system, at least that's what it seems like. Click on the map now. On the map now by clicking on the green circle. Okay. Okay, so, and they actually use, I mean, somewhat legit IPs, so cool. And if you're unfamiliar, an IP address is that 237.188.193.73. That's just a um, indicator of like the, if I've heard it described as being the postal code for, mm, for a computer, if you will, sort of like the address. Like it's literally the address, but you can interpret it figuratively as like a postal code. Let's see, your administrator of the system. Okay, probe system. The first thing you can, first thing you do on any system is scan it for adjacent nodes. This will reveal more computers on your map that you can use. Scan this computer now by pressing the scan network button on the display module. I'll give them credit. One of the first things that you do is actually reconnaissance, but you typically will, um, and this is probably, I'm gonna give them a little bit of slack because this is in the tutorial mode. The, uh, the thing about it is, is we generally only do uh, network reconnaissance whenever we're sure that we won't be discovered. It just depends on the nature of the, the type of hack that we're doing. So let's do scan network. That should be all you'll need from your own server for now. Disconnect from your machine. Okay. That's actually kind of smart because we do actually, when we're kicking off scans, they do take a way longer than you might think way longer. We're talking on the order of sometimes days, weeks, depending on how thorough we are. 
It's time for you to connect to an outside computer. Be aware that attempting to compromise the security of another's computer is illegal under USC Act. Yep, yep, that's, that's true, that's true. Proceed at your own risk. Uh, connect to an outside machine. Connecting to a blue node on the network map. Okay. Apple Studios 244. All right, so this is kind of simulating a computer system that is wide open and really it's, um, we, we call them, um, uh, well some, some people call them metasploitable boxes. Basically they're boxes that have been designated for the purpose of breaking into, so they're wide open. Um, so this is kind of like that, because normally scanning a, a system should reveal nothing, at least from the outside in. If they did their right, if they did their homework. This VM, so VM is virtual machine. So give them credit there, virtual machine. This virtual machine's terminal has been activated. This will be your primary interface for navigating and interacting with nodes. A command can be run by typing it out and pressing enter. The computer security system and open ports can be analyzed using the probe or nmap command. Oh, they actually used a real real command. So nmap is actually, yeah, network map, nmap. That's exactly what we use. Um, by analyzing the computer you're currently connected to. Okay, okay. Has been activated, you'll be primary interface. Okay, connected to Opal Studios. So, can we analyze using the probe command? So I need to, what, click on this? What is it asking? Do I need to, oh, the, the command terminal's over here in the corner, okay. So apparently I've connected to some sort of uh, POSIX-like system. A POSIX-like system is one of your Linux, your Unix, uh, potentially your Debian, um, potentially Linux, uh, Ubuntu. Um, I'm not gonna go through the list because there's about five bajillion of them. But suffice to say, these are all systems which have a um, command interpreter at their lowest level. Windows technically has one, but it, it is a emulated terminal. It's not actually the primary terminal. Um, on POSIX-like systems, they start from that baseline uh, command interpreter and they build up upon it. Whereas Windows starts with the graphical environment and then adds a, a command terminal as well. So we're gonna hit probe. And yes, you do actually just enter commands in a POSIX-like system. All right, probe. Okay, so they're using legit ports. HTTP servers, web, yeah. SMTP, file, SSH, 100%. Those are all real ports. Whenever we're scanning a device, yeah. We just see wide open ports sometimes and we knock on those ports and see what's going on. Pretty straightforward stuff. I'll give them massive credit. This is so far pretty accurate. I'm actually really impressed. So here you can see the active ports, active security, and the number of open ports required to successfully crack this machine using port hack whatever port hack is. I don't think it's, so here's the other thing. There, there are literally hundreds, if not thousands of utilities we use um, at different times when we're hacking that allow us to do different things at different times. There is only the most, I would say, arrogant hacker would say that they knew every single one of them because it's just not physically possible. There's just too many utilities. So rather than trying to know everything, what we do is we know how to Google. And when we're interested in trying to accomplish a particular hack, we'll either have a list of tools that we already use and know about, or we just Google it. Simple as that. And we just find the tool that we're looking for because you know, a lot of times the tools are just readily available on the web. You'd be surprised. Um, but anyway, I'm rattling on. Uh, here you can see the active ports, active security, and the number of open ports required to successfully crack this machine using port hack. Uh, I mean, it's not a tool I've used, but it could, could be one, I, I guess. 
This machine has no active security and requires no open ports to crack. If you were, uh, by the way, the term crack is a little bit flexible here because cracking is a distinct term from hacking. There is a difference. Um, so this wouldn't actually be a crack, this would be a hack. Um, if you were prepared, if you are prepared to, it is possible to crack this computer using the program port hack. Okay. Port hack. And you know what? I'm going to intentionally do this all lowercase just to see if it, uh, see what it does. Okay, so it's, so technically speaking, on a POSIX system, they are case sensitive. So me typing in all lowercase port hack, lowercase p-o-r-t-h-a-c-k, um, that wouldn't work. But if I typed in capital P-O-R-T, capital H-A-C-K, that would work. So technically they get a little points off for that. And yeah, that is a that is a thing. It is that distinction can be the difference between breaking something or not breaking into it. So I'm just saying there, there's some of these some of these things, they seem subtle. They seem silly, but they are the basis for how we get into some systems. Uh, congratulations, you have taken control of this external system and are now its owner. Okay. Oh, now it's administrator. You can do whatever you like with it. However, you should start by scanning for local nodes. Okay. Do this using the scan command. Okay. So it said earlier that I could use scan or nmap. So I'm going to do what we actually do, nmap. I'm kind of interested to see if they do a legit nmap command where it brings back uh, help. Nope, it doesn't. Okay. Eh, can't have everything. Normally a DAC, uh, TAC H would bring back uh, the help index of a particular device. And while I'm at it, why don't I type in man. I'm impressed. They've got a man page. Manual. That's, wow. Okay, let me try man and map. Oh, okay, so that's just a generic. Nah. They had me and then they had me off. Okay. <laughs> it's normally typing man and then the command and it'll tell you the command reference for a particular command that you're trying to execute. Uh, congratulations, you've taken control of this external system and are now its administrator. You can do whatever you like with it. However, you should start by scanning for local nodes to indicate this to scanning for local nodes to locate additional computers do this using the scan command, okay? And I've I've done that. Let me end map. So normally, when you hit end map, you don't just say end map. You got to give it a target, either a network um, or a specific IP address. This, you just scan it. So okay, cool. Normally, we're kind of probing in the dark, and we have to scan based on some sort of reasonable assumption. So we'll, we'll break into the system however we choose, and then we'll actually go through the process of identifying what networks are available to that system, and then delicately deciding whether or not through, usually through some DNS checks or um, possibly some, some other like, um, uh, Active Directory or uh, LDAP related checks, we'll see what potentially could be around because you want to try to minimize the amount of scanning that you do because it's really noisy. Um, but even if you do that, you still need to know what IP address or network you want to scan. So you can't just say nmap. You got to actually say what target. You can't, yeah. Um, probe complete, open ports. 244-71-104-113. And see, scanning, just hitting nmap, it just scanned myself. Because that's the system I'm connected to. Okay. So let's try scan. Because apparently it's expecting me to type in scan. Oh! Okay, so scan and nmap don't mean the same thing. It's kind of, kind of a... Uh, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. Well, a few points down for that. 
Let's see. Scanning, scan complete, no results. Not a problem. <laughs> Next, you should investigate the file system. The list of files and folders in the current directory. List the files and folders in the, in the current directory. List the file folders in the current directory. So what would that be, ls? Hey, hey, hey. It's got the ls command. And cd, okay, those are legit commands. Props. All right. Let me just check something real quick. And how are we looking over here? Okay, navigate to the bin folder, binaries folder, yeah, to search for useful executables using the command cd folder name, note the space, yep, cd slash, cd ls, so the ls command normally has a couple different tack command line arguments that you can add to it. So I gave it LHA, which is long list, human readable, and display all. And that should have displayed a nice concise list along with all the file sizes in a human readable format. And it would also include um, everything, even hidden directories. That's kind of my uh, default command. All right. But it didn't work. It just said ls. So home log bin. Okay. So let's go cd bin. Can I? Oh, it has autocomplete. Tab autocomplete. Not bad. To view the contents of the current folder you're in, use the command ls. There are no programs here, but you should look at config.txt in case it contains useful information. Okay. Is there, oh, there's a config.txt here. So let's try vi config.txt to see. No command vi. Normally I use vi. Um, so what is it asking? How do I, how do I look at it? Scan rmps kill cd mv connect scp help um, man2. Probe XC cat. Ah, okay, so they have a cat. Normally I do VI, but whatever. I think that text. Give them another credit. They have they have cat. So cool. It's a real command. Config any any number 12 continual spawning, sure. Colors enabled. Sure. Behaviors. Okay, texture folder. <laughs> Notice that uh, C documents and settings admin facts not porn. Documents, serious documents, system textures. Um, I don't know about you, but when it's in a folder called not porn and then documents, serious documents. Uh, textures, those are gonna be images. That tells me there's probably something there that some numbskull thought was a good idea to put there. <laughs> so the, in this case, it would be sensitive documents that somebody is trying pointlessly to hide using directory structures. So let's see, uh, totally useless. Now you can clear the tracks before you leave. Move up the folder to CD, you know, it's wildcard. You know, Let's see. I want to see if there's anything there. CD. 
Although that is a C colon forward slash, which would indicate a Windows directory structure. But let's see, CD invalid path. Uh, CD home, CD dot dot, CD slash home. Hmm. Normally I would do an ls tech a um, and that might give me an indication of what it could be but there's no indication here so I don't want to just fire something off I don't know what it could be um, I guess I could do a cat on it yeah that's just a bunch of garbage it's 3.496 kilobytes of binary data. And it, they literally mean binary data. That's not actually what binary data looks like normally. This is actually an ASCII, um, an ASCII file that has binary data inside of it. So it's not truly an executable. What we've got here is somebody typed out a bunch of ones and zeros inside of a text document. I'll just leave it at that. I have no idea why that is. This is just the hacker in me. I just, I always like to see what's going on, look around. Yeah, all right. Yeah, another one. It's just garbage data. I mean, the game's probably thinking that that's a, um, a clever way of structuring it so that um, it looks like binary data to the player, but that's not actually what binary data looks like. It looks like garbage. It looks, when you go to view it, it has every kind of random character you can think of, not just ones and zeros. Move to the log folder, CD folder name, okay? LS CD log. Delete all the files in this directory. Ooh, yeah, wiping your tracks, I'll give them credit, rm star. Now I would do rm star tech rf, and that'll basically remove everything forcefully and everything below everything, so there wouldn't be anything left at all in the directory. I'll read by done, 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 done. Became admin. Huh, okay, hm. interesting. Disconnect from this computer. You can type DC or disconnect command. Normally you just type exit, so let's see if that works. Now, DC, fine. I don't know what why didn't they just put exit in? Exit's the command you give to SSH to close the terminal, or to give, give to bash to close the terminal. Congratulations, you have completed the guided section of this tutorial. To finish it, you must locate the process ID of this tutorial program and kill it. The help command will give you a complete command history. Okay, PS, um, uh, PS, grab. Um, tutorial? Hey you, there it is. All right. So what I just did was I looked for the process and I, I piped it to grep, which means I took the output of the PS command, which you can see it apparently is a abridged version of the PS command. Um, normally a PS would bring up every process on the system and it would be so much garbage you like there's just stuff in there that yeah you, a lot of it's useful but a lot of stuff you won't recognize um, and you normally have to grep it in other words search through it for a particular entry and so piping ps to grep allows you to then 
search through whatever it is that came out of PS for, in this case, tutorial. Um, but that didn't work because it doesn't have apparently anything in the PS command except the one thing that we got to get rid of. So kill minus nine or tack nine up old habits. Um, kill tack nine two fifty one, which is the very impolite way to kill something. <laughs> we'll just put it that way. Oh, invalid PID. Sorry. Kill two fifty one. Okie doke. It's really wanting me to see that there's this thing up here. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the music if I can. Music volume. Because I don't know about you, but that that music is not my friend. All right. So now we've left the tutorial. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn on some nice chill beats instead. You may or may not hear them too, too clearly, it's okay. They're just kind of there for the background. All right, tutorial ended. All right. Let's see here, first contact. Okay. Hi, I don't know you and I'm sad to say that I never will. But if you're reading this, it means you might be the only person that can make things right. Right now, I'm trapped. There's no way out and not enough time. I need your help. But there's something you need to take care of first. The faster, the better. Hacknet OS wasn't meant to be released as it is now. After a while, an automated tracker will activate itself. We can't let that happen. Connect to your own node. It should be green on your net map and then find and delete securitytracer.exe, okay? When you're done, just reply to this email. Hurry, bit, zero. Note, Hacknet Navigation Guide. Okay. Um. Security tracker, okay. An automated tracker will activate itself. We can't let that happen. Connect to your own node. I'm assuming it's this Jmail thing. No? Are they saying that I need to delete security tracker.exe? Oh, okay. Cool. That was easy. All right, now I'm supposed to reply to the email. Getting some tools together. It's, it's really nice because I'm able to use many of the most basic commands really efficiently because I just do that anyway. So yeah, it's not actually requiring me to reinvent the wheel in order to learn how to use this, so. Not bad. Great, that should keep you safe for now, at least from your own computer. Before we start, you're going to need a few things. Port hack alone just isn't going to cut it in most modern computers you'll find. Not ones with anything worth looking at anyway. You should start by checking up on a friend of mine. He goes by Viper. Awful, I know. Honestly, not the brightest crayon in the box, but he always seems to get a hold of useful code. You should have no trouble getting into his files. Finding something useful might be more of a challenge. Wait, so I can't just ask? I've got to get into his stuff? Okay. You can, for the most part, ignore the generic files, stuff that gets logged or saved by a program, IRC logs and the like. Custom name things like .exe folders are what you want to look out for. Download any files you can use with using the command SCP. Good luck. Reply again when you're done. Bit. Okay. Do I click on this? And okay. Viper Battle Station. All right. Um. All right. So I'm guessing we're going to probe the system first. 
Okay. Um. Port hack. See if that does it. Oh Lord. <laughs> um man. That was way too easy. This system would have been compromised so long ago. <laughs> okay, so all I had to do was do port hack and it just okay, just let me in. Sure, sure. Alright, now I'm going to probe the system. All right, so nothing new there. Uh, oh yeah, Viper Battle Station. Log in. Complete. Admin login successful. Sweet. LS home. YouTubers notes, ASDF. Let's do cat YouTubers. Uh, cat notes. That sweet hacksaw program from the server Gollum told me about. This is so so sick. Can't wait to try it out. Okay. Cat asdf.txt. Induction test. Proxy server needs something about overloading it. Maybe. Okay. Cat email draft. So it's just good, good uh, hygiene or good practice, if you will, to just, if you get something like a text file, eh, why not look at it? See if there's anything juicy inside. It's like, why not? Email draft, dad, sorry, blah, 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 blah. It's called ftpbounce.exe. So this is exactly what I was talking about. He's got this exe. FTP bounce is what I'm looking for. So I wonder if I can go LS CD bin SSH crack.exe sys nope. So the DLLs and the .sys's, those would indicate this is a Windows system, even though I'm connecting to it through what is kind of like an SSH terminal or secure shell. I mean, in theory, you could have SSH configured on a Windows 10 box, but this directory structure is POSIX. So there is a kind of a discontinuity there. We've got some mix mash, mix mismatch Miss, miss, mishmash of Linux and Windows systems inside this computer, which I don't know. There's a couple different ways we could do that, but I won't get into it. Um, let's see, LS, go back to home, work, Jasper log, ripped pre-release, Seb, Target. Okay. There's nothing in this directory. I'm going to go with bin. So the utility that he mentioned was FTP bounce.exe. But the only utility here is SSH crack. That's like literally the only binary. Um, I guess I could try doing find. I mean, these are small enough file systems that I can manually browse through them. Yeah, it doesn't have a find command. So it is what it is. Hey, what's up, Julian? Yeah, I'm just going through this, kind of giving this thing the uh, 
the once over here. So far, I'm pretty impressed with this this program. It's got it's got a SSH POSIX-like system. It's got LS, CD, it has you navigate the directory trees, it has you do nmap, it, it's actually relatively close to, you know, some of the stuff, the reality of it, but um, yeah, it's kind of kind of weird. Some of the things that it has and doesn't have, like it doesn't have the find command for some reason. I guess that would be too easy. <laughs> So far, this, uh, this is all right. Um, I don't know, it feels a little bit too much like work. <laughs> like literal, like, oh, we're, we're back at work kind of thing. Um, but I guess for your average person coming into this, it's, it could be a, a decent way to kind of get your, get, cut your teeth on hacking and kind of demystify some of it a little bit at least. So, we'll see. So, it's got an SCP command, so let's go to sys and see what happens. Oh, right, sorry, I was going to bin, slash bin. So the only thing, it's got a bin directory, which indicates POSIX, but it's got a .exe, which indicates Windows. So, which is it? And SCP, which indicates POSIX again. So like, flip flop, flip flop, flip flop. Can I just SCP it to myself? Do I just type in? Yeah, they made SCP command super simple so you don't have to like specify the destination. It just copies it back to you. Okay. Uh, I can't type exit, I've got to type DC. All right. All right, so I got this email from, from so and so, bit. Um, for the most part, the generic IRC logs, stuff that gets logged or saved by the program. IRC logs and like custom name things like exe or what you want to look for. Download any files you can use using the command. Okay. Um, so I'm just supposed to, <laughs> it's almost like I've got, I downloaded this rando file, this rando binary onto my system and now I'm just what supposed to just detonate it that's effectively what this is is like you get a, a binary off the web and you don't even know who or what it is or why or anything you just gonna execute it all right that's fine I guess let's see home did where did it put it surely not bin Oh, it did put it in bin. Okay, that's weird. <laughs> Let me move this, uh, move this thing off my screen on this side. Oh, let's see. Oh, sorry. Part of the the chat was uh, obscured by this dumb pop up that Facebook did that uh, kind of obfuscated it. Um, let's see, doesn't even have the even have file, he's just curious. You know, that is a worthwhile question. Let's just see what, what file does. Don't even give it a second, second thought. No command, so we're just detonating a... <laughs> okay. Now, see if it's a POSIX-like system. Uh, no, it's not. It's not doing. Okay, so this isn't bash. I can't. I can't do, sl you know, slash commands. No port number provided. But where am I supposed to shoot this SSH? To, is there a man SSH crack? Command list. Uh, man. Yeah, it has a man page, but it's not like a traditional man page. It's actually just a list of rando commands that you just leaf through by typing man one, two, three. Yeah, and it doesn't, there's no um, help entry for how to use this thing. Let's see, SSH crack dot, what? what? I don't have to specify dot exe? Oh man, it's the fine details that get me. 
it's, they bug me. I should have to type in .exe. I shouldn't have to, ah, it bugs me. Why does that bug me so much? <laughs> SSH crack, um, let's see, dot, no, so tach, target port is closed, execution failed, but, Hacknet, quick reference sheet. Download files with SCB. Okay, that's that's pretty straightforward. I've done that already. Am I supposed to break into jmail.com? Okay, fine. Let's just let's do this. Let's do this thing. Um, Connected to Jmail. You're the administrator. Blackburn PC. Okay. Uh, CD bin. SSH crack. We're going to do, what is the IP of Jmail? 74.125.237.119. Okay. Um, probe. Cool, it's got, uh, it's got bash history, basically. Probe is the equivalent of nmap here for some reason. Ooh, firewall detected. Ooh, proxy detected. <laughs> that's not bad. I mean, that's, that's pretty realistic. So 74, am I supposed to specify 22? Proxy active cannot execute. What proxy? You're telling me the proxy on... What? Target port is closed. Oh, that's what the lock means. Okay, so it's just, it's just scanning these common ports. Okay, so I'm finally understanding what's, what's at, what it's doing here. So I'm used to whenever you, but see, then it says probe complete open ports, 80, 25, 21, 22. Open port does not mean it's visible, but you can't do anything with it. Open port means that it's literally an open channel into that system. So it shouldn't, hmm, the terminologies, they're, they did good at the, at the very first. <laughs> click here, click now. There won't be another chance, folks. Yeah. I don't know why the chat isn't scrolling. It's like I, I just see the... Um, I just see it whenever I manually scroll down, which is kind of goofball. But anyway. Okay, so... Proxy detected, firewall detected. What does it expect me to do with this? So, what? Do I connect to Jmail? I log in... Oh, so that's the Jmail, okay. Am I supposed to hack into Viper Battle Station? But I've already got admin control of that one. Oppol Studio? Oh man, what are they wanting me to do? Viper Battle Station, scan there. Oh, hey, there we go. I did scan network and I just found another node. Entropy Asset Cache. Hey, 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 all right, try harder, boys and girls, try harder. All right, probe system, firewall detected, ooh, scary ghost, scary ghost. So it's 15, 187, all right, I'm gonna go back here, I'm gonna go, um, I'm gonna go back to my system. Can I do a ping on that? I'd like to see if I can hit that node without having to bounce through this Viper whatever guy's system. There's no ping command! There's no ping command. Give me... Oh, yeah, yeah. This, it's basically chat to me. I mean, it. you're commenting on the post, but it's effectively chat. It does the same thing, at least here in Facebook land. We're st I'm still learning how Facebook live streaming works, so 
yeah coming from twitch and coming from youtube and all that this is a different system altogether but hey we'll just go with what we got yeah yeah I, so yeah man it doesn't have it does not have ping let that sink in ping how do they expect me to just ah okay that bugs me i'll i'll try probing probe probing this port maybe that's the equivalent of ping even though it's not it's the equivalent of nmap but it's not okay so i can hit it but there's a proxy and a firewall but if i come from viper battle station then I've got no um, no IP, no proxy in the way. So let's try um, CD bin. Mm. Why is bin not working? I was trying to do autocomplete and it wasn't working. All right, so. 15.187.32.127 SSH crack. Oh. SSH. Target port is closed. What? Do what, mate? Do I just happen to have login creds to this thing? No. Um, can't scan it, can't. Um, let me try port hack, which shouldn't be on the system that I'm bouncing from. I'm on, I'm on Viper, Viper Battle Station. That should not work. Port hack is the generic hack utility that seems to just break through everybody's security. And it's on everybody's system, so I can just scan with it. Okay. Did that work? It actually worked? Connected to entropy cache, log in. Okay, so Viper Battle Station, port hack. So the actual command that we would use to break into a system really depends on the nature of the insecurity involved um, because we're gonna try to shim ourselves into any kind of remote issue that we find on a particular system. If it's got an SSH port, okay, does it have rate limiting in any way? If it has no rate limiting and it doesn't have public key authentication, then potentially you can just start going after admin root and seeing what works. If you happen to know what users potentially can access that system, then you can just start guessing it. If it's got a, um, if it's a Windows system and it has a, let's say a terminal server attached to it. So you're able to uh, get into it through terminal services, then you just simply can brute force that. There's actually a couple of utilities that are really easy to, to brute force because um, there's not really any, any indication on the user side that they're being brute forced. That's why you need to keep your terminal services locked up tight. Um, if it's uh, Telnet, then... <laughs> okay, it's those are, those are just... It's dumb to even have Telnet running. Um, because it's that insecure. Um, let's see. I keep checking to see if there, there's any scrolling in the, that I'm missing in the chat. Um, let's see, so port hack, port hack. All right, we're doing port hack. Okay, so it says password found. It's, so it said password found, but where's the password? Port 
What is it expecting of me? View logs. Connection from became admin. 237.15. So it said password found, but then it didn't. Normally it's like it's keeping the passwords. It's, it's like letting me know what passwords are, are available. Um, yeah. Became admin, disconnect from. File copied. Oh, yeah, okay. yes, SCP. File read, file read. Connection from. There's no indication of. Oh, man. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. So I've tried, I've done all of the things that it mentions that you can do. I've done port scan, I've probed it, I've used port hacked, um, I've used the SSH hack system. Do I need to execute it from here? I've done that. Um, Yeah, SSH crack 15 127 Target port is closed. Yeah, I know. So what does it expect? Maybe let's do scan network here. Nope. Let's do scan network here. Nope. Probe system. Nothing. Login, no username or password has, yeah, there's no, I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know. Gmail, login. I don't know, I, I'm kind of, uh, so I'm, I'm trying to work within the bounds of what it's given me. Normally, um, when I get to this point, I am either spreading out my potential attack avenues. I'm trying to see if there's any open ports. I'm trying to see if there is any services on any of those ports that I could potentially use. If potentially they've got a web server running, is that secure? It, does it have the ability to do any sort of um, side channel attacks. If they've got Telnet, can I hop onto the same network and you know listen in on the traffic coming to and from that? Maybe there's a system that actively uses Telnet. I can listen for credentials on that if, I've, if I happen to be on the same network segment. But none of that is accurate here. None of that works. So, yeah. This is kind of annoying because it doesn't tell me. So, you should keep it safe, at least from your own computer. Before we start, you're going to need a few things. Port hack alone isn't going to cut it on most modern computers you'll find. Not ones with anything worth looking at anyway. You just start by checking up on a friend. He goes by Viper, Awful, etc. Uh, if I. You can, for the most part, get in. Or the generic files, stuff that gets logged, say from a program, IRC logs, stuff like XEs. Okay, download any files. Good luck. Reply again. Oh, reply again when you're. <sighs> Reading is fundamental, guys. Reading is fundamental. I went through all that just because I didn't read the last line. 
uh, and that was my fault because I started thinking too much like real world and not enough like the game wants me to think. And there is a difference here. Are you serious? SSH Crack 22? Uh, okay. Honestly, I have no way of knowing if you succeeded in this responder, but if you're seeing this, it means at least you found something. I'm going to assume it's something really useful. You should try breaking out, breaking one of my old test servers if Viper had the sort of thing he's known for getting lying around. You should have everything you need to get in. Remember, any non-basic programs you get, you need, you get, need a port number to run like this. Okay. Just find the port you want to crack and run it on that. Oh, in case, but see, SSH crack 22, 22 of what? Do I put in a target computer? It's not, it's not, that's not quite right. But anyway, oh, and in case you don't know already, you can hit the tab to autocomplete commands, hitting SSH, autocomplete, full name, etc. Works for everything. Okay, I have to add this Bitwise test PC. All right, probe system, the equivalent of Nmap, fine. Um, so let's do, um, so I'm on 34, no, I need to be, so this, this command shell is kind of weird. Normally I would do the probing from my system and so I would have my shell open and I wouldn't have their shell because I, I haven't got a shell yet. So I need to port hack, or do I need to, do I actually launch it like this? If this is the way you run it, this is... Too few open port, new additional ports. Open additional ports on target machine. Okay. Um, see, I'm on the target system, so... Port hack, uh, SSH. Oh, let's do it. SSH. Crack 22. Yeah, that's weird. So normally when you're executing any kind of command, you're gonna be running it from your system, not the system that you are trying to break into, unless you've already broke into it and you've got a shell. I, it says 34, 74, 120, 154, and it's acting as if I've got a shell when I don't. So there's a pretty important difference there. That's not great. So what do I just do SSH? Login failed. Did it just open the port up? It did. It actually just opened the port up. Okay. I don't know how that works. Now I can port hack it. That's not accurate at all. That's that's really inaccurate, actually. You wouldn't just have SSH. You wouldn't just run a command that just magically opens up SSH and then does that from a separate system without admin credentials. And then you couldn't just run some other magic command and get... Um, and get into the system. That's just not real. Um, so yeah, you are the administrator of the system. Cool. Um, probe system? Yeah, okay. Cool, so now that I've got that open, now what? Um, nice work. Here's where it's going to start getting harder. I need to ask a favor. I've been a little bit sloppy lately, which is what got me into this whole thing. why I'm writing this in the first place. I guess anyway, the point is there's some logs on a few computers that I prefer weren't there. So I'm cleaning up after his logs. You should remember this. If you forget anything else, I tell you, don't get sloppy. Delete your logs. That's accurate. That's accurate. Delete your logs. If you haven't been, start now. Everything you do on any modern OS is tracked and logged and this 
tilde log folder. No, it's not. It's logged in slash log. Why would it be logged in home directory log? That's home directory. OK. And you also wouldn't just rm star the whole thing. I mean, you could. But if you did, it's pretty obvious that somebody was on there that wasn't supposed to be there. So you typically just remove the parts that involved you. Um, OK, so there's our target PC. Uh-huh. So we probe the system. All right. Now we do magic SSH crack. We magically crack into SSH. Don't ask any, don't give it a second thought. It just magically works. OK. Um, then I do port hack. Magically hack the port, whatever that is. OK, mm, yeah. So now I'm the admin, sure. Tilde slash log. So he said tilde slash, tilde slash log, which means home directory log. So that was, that's flat wrong. Yeah, log rm star. Normally, I would kind of want to go through that. You see that the, the whole idea behind hacking you should be getting from this is that it's not this really fast process that you see in the movies. The key thing is that it's a very detail-oriented, very meticulous process where we look for every little tiny wedge that we can use to, to get in. We carefully cover our tracks. We carefully probe the system and the surrounding networks. And... We do everything we can to try and, well, try harder. We, we try harder at finding any kind of shim that we can use to get in or, or um, move laterally across a system, either in within that system or across a network. Um, but it's not this super quick process that you see in movies where they just smack on the keyboard real fast and then they're in. I'm in the FBI. No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. All right, so let's uh, see uh, DC. I don't like that command. All right, Jay Anderson's bedroom PC has been successfully cleaned up. Where to from here? All right, if you see this, then you've done well, and well, all this might actually be worth something. Let's see, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so we've played this for about an hour, and I wanted to give each game about an hour to work with, and I was gonna kind of give my verdict on it. So let's have a look. Hacknet, so it has Real commands. Oh, I said dyslexia. Real commands, check. I'm gonna make that a green check. Real commands, it has somewhat real, real-ish. real-ish scenarios. So yeah, give it a check for that. Um, time frame to break. Time frame to shells is no. Now, the reality is the shells take a lot longer to get, and the shells are these exactly what I've been showing you, the, the ability to execute commands on a system, preferably as administrator. Time frame to shells is inaccurate, um, and uh, lacks basic. Um, diagnostic tools. 
So respect, that's a negative. So hacknet, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'll give them most of the credit because it's actually, um, it's actually somewhat reminiscent of how it is to kind of blindly go in. It's not sexy, it's just, you just connect to a system and you're kind of rummaging around in the dark and you're slowly building out your perspective. So I think what I'll give this one is, let's say a six out of 10. So thumbs up there. You know what? I'm not even going to try to draw that because that was stupid. <laughs> I was like, thumbs up, draw a thumbs up. No, don't draw a thumbs up. All right. So that is Hacknet. Give it a six out of 10. It's pretty good. Um, are you going to learn anything from it? Maybe, maybe. Um, but oh, on the whole, I think it has a lot of room to improve. And if they included some extra commands, because on some certification tests, um, there are better command interpreters than I've seen on this game, where you can actually execute most, if not all, of the commands that a given system has. I'm thinking um, the, um, oh, let's see, what, what com which ones am I thinking of? Uh, some of the Cisco, command Cisco uh, certifications have simulations where they actually have a mostly accurate um, command interpreter. It's going to be kind of curtailed, but it has a heck of a lot more commands than, than this, this, these systems had, which, okay, fine. When you have a lot of commands, it makes it more complex, sure. Um, but I also think that's a little bit closer to reality. So let's close out of Hacknet. Closing out of it now. And we're gonna open up, go back over to Steam and let's go to Hack Me. Just waiting for it to load. Desktop. Okay. Um, Ruski. Oh, can I not turn off the music? Oh. Oh. Oh my. Okay. Before we can hack Sony and Microsoft servers, I need to train you smaller targets. We need to upgrade your soft our software, so we need money. Our target is EC Bank. It has a primitive protection despite the fact that I have collected information on one of the I want to see if I can turn the sound off uh, I can't turn off the music oh man why well bear with me people it's we're gonna have to just suffer through it <laughs> let me just get rid of the it's this Kind of garbage synth stuff sure yep yep ec bank it's a primitive protection despite the fact that i have collected information about one of their serve their directors you can read it in a file folder and desktop read it carefully because it will need, you'll need a password after that you can open up a command on your desktop okay Ooh, f society yeah ask mr robot that's what that is about info it's interesting. It's kind of like a no. It's not draggable. It's almost like a actual Windows setup. Very Windows centric. Alleged passwords: date of birth, dog's name, date of birth. Not married. Has a dog. Mike. So probably Mike would be the easiest one. All right. So Mike. Um, connect, okay, connect 
I'm just writing this down because I don't know if it's going to tell me. 39.128.117.246. Okay. Connect. Oh man, it's got the cheesy clickety clack keyboard sound. Oh no. Mic. Okay, can I open up multiple windows? All right, so DOB is 0321-1964. All right. Uh, 0, 3, 2, 1, 1964. Good job, we're logged in. That is actually kind of accurate. People do set dumb passwords that are, and if you do this, it's dumb. I'm just sorry to say, if you set it to your dog's name, if you set it to your birthday, if you set it to any combination thereof, of anything that's available on your Facebook, then you're wrong. It should not be anything on your Facebook at all. In fact, it shouldn't be anything identifiable at all. It should just simply be scrambled trash. That's the best way to do it. And you ask me how, use LastPass, lastpass.com. Not an ad, they're not sponsored. Just go to lastpass.com. It's just a good, good solution. It's what I use. And I'm not afraid to say that because they've been hacked many times. They've never once had a data breach that actually involved data leaving unencrypted from their systems. So they are very secure. Good job, we're logged in. Now we can steal his bank account's username and password. To be honest, I've already hacked him and I know where his, where is, and I've already hacked him and I know where is the log with this information, okay? But on your next objectives, you'll need to find it by yourselves. Okay. KD colon slash documents bank log pass. Okay. I'll give it credit. It's making me take notes because it's not spoon feeding it to me um, like Hacknet was. Spoon, um, it's not like keeping up with the credentials and things automatically. I have to actually put in some of this stuff. Um, okay, ls, okay, dir, man, help, cd, d colon, slash, documents, bank, I'm logged in, but I'm logged in with what? Um, I'm connected. Man, I wish I could turn off this cheesy music. It's it's cheese ball as hell. C documents bank is an un C D okay. Um, I don't have any I don't have any um, command history, so I have to type everything in manually. Um What commands do I have? I can't use man, I can't use help, I can't use cd, I can't use dir, I can't use ls. So what exactly can I use? Do I just type in d colon slash documents? Bank log pass dot txt, do I just simply execute it? Okay. 
D colon documents bank. Notepad, calc. <laughs> okay. Um, this might be a really short review because wow, there is. I wasn't kidding when I said they don't really they they don't spoon feed you. They really don't. But at the same time, they also don't provide any basic commands that I can use to begin to get my awareness on a system. And that's probably coming from the perspective of the real world too much because it, it could be that me having this perspective on this actual world, I'm kind of at a disadvantage because if I didn't know any of these commands, then I wouldn't know to use them. Um, if I was coming in with as a blank slate, I might look closer at what they're doing and, and pay better attention. Um, all that to say somebody who's brand new might have an easier time than me because I've got my own perspective that comes in thinking I know things. Um, hmm. Calc is an un unknown command. I don't have ls, I don't have help, I don't have man. Dur. Exit. DC. Bye. Nope. What can I do? Okay, let's do the old, oh, what's skip? Hello student, I'm having some trouble with the law. I'll have to disappear from the network. What network? Maybe a year, maybe more. I leave the I leave your email in the hackers databases. Hackers databases. What? I'll have to disappear from the network. Maybe a year, maybe more. I leave your email in the hackers databases whatever that means you will get tasks on your mail all this time while you studied I work I worked on my programming language for a complete anonymity F plus plus I leave it to you don't forget about your main goal I hope to see you again good luck student shark 7-eleven what do what 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 does he has to disappear from the network okay oh by the way this is still in russian so it's a bit difficult to read Uh, okay, this is rough. This is really rough. I'm just clicking around, looking for... Oh, now I've got these. High Vaj could. Okay, what is that? So this is a knockoff of Nmap, or Zenmap technically. Wait, no, this is a, this is a registry, no, not a registry, this is a 
in-memory evaluator for reverse engineering, maybe? Mm. Maybe it modifies binaries for reversing, reversing? Okay, welcome traceroute, brute force, web server tester, website URL. Man, this freaking... I really, really want to turn off this music. Anus? Anus? Yeah, did you notice that? Anus. Okay, maybe I'm missing something there, but I don't know why you would name your home network Anus. <laughs> okay! Hacking the game. Good morning. I spend a lot of my time in Frog of Empires, but bleep developers made very expensive currency. Could you cheat me money in the game? Game site Frog of Empires. Now I have 12,500 12, 12, in-game dollars. I'll pay for this $1,000 for 1,000 in-game dollars. Man, that's a bad exchange rate. Okay, game site, Frog of Empire. To hack the site and change the data, you'll need two programs, CUD and HVJA. That kind of looks like an IKEA. It's like IKEA hacking tool. HVJA, HVJA. Yes, I would like the HVJA in maroon, please. I'd like it to go next to the SCALD, yes. The scald happens to fit perfectly with the hivjalj uh, in my room decor. First, you need to find a vulnerable section of the site through CUD. Run it. Okay. So, CUD. Enter the URL to find sections of vulnerabilities of the vulnerabilities and press the green zipper on the top left. So, this is kind of like um, Snort. Another utility that we use. Um, it's clear that they've got some some um, knowledge of some of these tools, but not. I don't know. It. Mm, I don't know. Let's just see. Um, enter the site URL to find sections of the vulnerabilities and press the green zipper in the top left. Continue. Okay. I need to write down. Uh, Jmail? I, I can't open two things at once. Frog of Empires. All right. Frog of Empires. Of Empires.com. They want 1,000 of them. Now I have, he currently has 1,000, 1,250. 12,500. So the reason I'm writing down 12,500 is that if this is something trivial enough that I can reverse engineer, find it in memory and look for 12,500 under this person's uh, information, then I can usually just increment that value um, by 1,000 in order to increase their in-game money. Um, that's really basic stuff. It would not work on anything like World of Warcraft or any of those types of things. So don't think that that's the case here. Because um, their, their databases are much better secured. It's not even close to this level of triviality. Um, HTTP. All right. And if you're interested, I'm, I'm probably going to end up putting my uh, iPad uh, display on, on for you. But uh, frogofempires.com, 1250. Okay. Yep. So that's what I've been writing down. Um, let's see. Could website URL frog HTTP colon slash slash frog of empires dot com. 
do I, is that it? Okay. I'm used to just hovering my mouse over something and giving me a little bit. So what this is doing is it's doing a directory traversal attack. Um, it's just going through and putting in any directories that it finds uh, on the website and spidering out and trying to traverse into them. Remember the section and open hive jaws. So I'll give them, I'll give them credit. Having to write down notes is a key component of hacking that people don't really realize. And if you're not keeping up with certain things like variables, values, directories, you're just gonna be stumbling around blindly and you won't remember things. So for me, I take copious notes. Um, so it looks like the slash China or CN directory, CN. Frog of Empires, CN. All right, so now we do the IKEA hack. Now enter the section's URL, which you have received in the CUD. Enter the value you want to change and the value you want to replace with. So that's exactly what I was talking about. So I'm not sure since it's not giving me the binary, um, giving me the binary of, or the in memory snapshot. Uh, this is kind of eye washing it. This is hand waving away the difficulty of this particular type of hack dot com slash cn value to change 12 500 and i want it to be 13 500 searching for value in forum faq registration login players so i guess these are databases that i'm allegedly going through This is, this is definitely a lot less complex than it is in reality. Normally you would have a, you would have to scroll through a in-memory snapshot that shows the actual data in, in memory and you would have to use an interpreter to go through and find the values that you're attempting to change. For anyone that's used a, um, uh, a game shark, maybe, you know, there's there's a few people the, the, I know because I was one of them. Um, the old game sharks that they had for cartridges, and I think they also have them for um, for some newer stuff. I, I haven't used one in ages, um, but I know back with the N64, I had a, a game genie or a game shark or what. I know game genie, I think, was the name of it. And if you wanted to make your own. Um, cheat, you had to analyze memory in real time and find the value that you're interested in changing. Um, and just similar to this, but this has greatly simplified the process of what it is to actually hack into a database. Databases are not this easy to hack into, much less leaf through, because there could be other people that have that same value. So, eh. Now open Jmail to check the customer's response. Okay. So customers, I'm not like in the whole, like actual illegal underground type thing. Now the money will be enough transferring to your account. Okay. Is that it? Okay. Now it's adding net view. Make the music stop. The punishment of the music. I, I don't know if I can stand another 20 minutes of it. Okay, so I'm gonna do a two-parter here because I actually have Hack Me um, 1 and 2. So, man, make that music stop. So what I'm gonna do is go and exit and open up Hack Me 2 in the hope that maybe the music is better. Hack Me 2. Oh, I've gotta install it. Of course I do. But fortunately, SSD to the rescue. Actually, NVMe drive to the rescue. Has finished downloading. 
cool. Yeah, so there was a number of issues with that game. Um, and we can probably take it back to the, uh, the iPad here. Um, so hack me. One. Hack me one. And if we go up to, up to here, we can kind of use this as a uh, template to let's see, I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it here. All right, so get rid of that. Did it have real scenarios? Are real commands? No, it did absolutely did not. And none of those commands were real. Um, were the scenarios real? Hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. The fact that you had to get into a system based on stealing somebody's bank account information that was posted on social media because people use their birthday and their dog's name as email. Yeah, sure. That's accurate. Um, time frame to shells, very inaccurate. Um, it was way inaccurate. And um, let's see, basic diag tools, delete. Whoa. Basic diag tools. And didn't it didn't really have those either um so hack me one i'm gonna give i'm gonna give it a failing grade of let's say um i'll give it a three out of ten um, and just remember we got hacknet was a six out of ten so i'm kind of using that as my litmus test here so there it is Hack me one, three out of ten. Mm, eh, it was all right. The music, oh, the music though. The music was the worst. I couldn't stand it. It was bothering me. Um, all right. So now that that's out of the way, can can you give me hack me two, please? Oh, first time setup. Hurry up, Steam. Yeah, overall, eh, I mean, there were some things in there that made sense. There were some things that just were bananas. Like, I, I, you saw me, I was going through that and I just didn't even, the, the tutorial was dead-ended. So, let's see, Hack Me Too. All right, switching over to that. Hi. Welcome to Hack OS 2.0. It's not called Hack OS. It's called many things like Kali Linux or Kali, some of you. We've added some new features. Oh, great. Now you can copy from messages. Oh, <laughs> that's surprisingly nice to do. Use log tray to check last messages. Okay, cool. Feel free to listen with music player. I can pause the music. Oh, happy day. Add your custom music and wallpapers into documents hack me to folder. Nah, I'm good. I'm good. Okay, thanks. Enjoy. Okay. Okay. Hi, I have something for you. Check your email. So already it's better. Double click the mail icon. Mail from Kate. It's more like Windows 10. Don't reply to this email and don't try to find me. Well, I'm going to get some actually pleasant music on. All right.
just checking the comments, making sure there wasn't any new updates there that I missed. Hi, don't reply to this email and don't try to find me. I want you to do something for me and my friends. At the same time, just check your email sometimes. Don't forget to clear logs. Okay. Meh. Sure. Okay, let's let's try. The first mission is to hack someone account. Okay. Go to hack life. Ay, 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 ay. Hack life dot com slash Tom Tom a Tom four zero two four three nine. Hmm. Okay. So what I'm gonna do for you guys real quick is, uh, you guys can't see my notes that I'm writing, and what I'm gonna do is make it so that you can see them. So let's. Okay. Just throwing it on the screen there and creating a nice little semi, somewhat visible notes section here. And let's go ahead and make it semi-transparent. right there cool all right so now you have the desktop and I'm gonna go ahead and create sorry I'm doing this on stream right in, right in everybody's face and this is just a, a good thing that I wanted to do so you guys can have a little bit better idea of what it is that I'm actually doing and writing down. So I'm not constantly switching between the two. Okay. Okay. I'll just switch between these two real quick. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, so now you can at least somewhat see what I'm doing. So I just wrote down hacklife.com 402439. Sure. Okay. I'm to clear logs. Sure. All right, but I feel like an idiot. Um, yeah, okay. B force? Maybe it's Hack life 
Facebook.com. User ID is Tom uh, Tom four zero two four three nine. Oh, connect. Okay. Um, I'll give him credit. It does take a while to connect to some of these things. So the fact that it is taking so long to connect. Mm, eh, that could be realistic. Although it's, we, I know it's eyewash. I know it's just, oh, I can move the windows now. Wow. Impressive. Hiv judge, text edit, text editor. Do I, is it asking me to go to a website? Oh, whoa. Oh, whoa. Huh. Okay, this is a real web browser, I think. Um, it is, this is a real web browser. What the heck? Oh. Okay. You know, I'm interested to see whether or not this is a real website for, for, for real Z's. For real Z's. Okay, so, huh. Interesting, so they do an intercept on it. Huh. Yeah. He is the target. Open B Force and enter all the data you know. B Force. I guess that means brute force. Thomas, he, he, so, okay, so I'm gonna write down all of the relevant information about this particular uh, target that I'm collecting on. Cause this is collection, this is, this is an Intel collection. Thomas K E I G H T L E Y. He's an actor, director, Mr. Droid. And now I'm interested in learning, in learning of hacking. So if you can teach me, write me. Okay. Why you need to avoid Mile Wire Co. products. Mile wire so i'm getting mostly nouns if you haven't noticed there's lots of nouns in here nouns and and specific times and days if there's anything march 13th 1987 or march 3 march 3 1987 march 3rd 1987 uh, san francisco california Hello world. It's doing this weird bug where it's like, yeah, that's not just you guys, that's me uh, seeing what you guys see. It's kind of like bugging out and shrinking the page down. Okie dokie. Uh, what's this? John posted your wall, Jane likes your post. Okay. B force.
let's see, I opened B Force. Okay, hacklife.com, Tom, Tom, uh, Tom, 402-439, or is that this, okay. Connection failed, forcing, oh, oh, okay, so you need to put in what you're forcing, okay. Mr. Droid. Can I put that in? No? What the what? Okay, so it's got a entry I can put in here, but it's not. Okay. This is looks like a entry field, but I can't actually type anything. At least I, it doesn't look like I can type anything. Hack. Hack life. Make sure that's the right place. Hack. Um, HTTP colon backslash backslash hacklife.com slash Tom. Uh, Tom 402-439. I'm gonna control C that just in case. Yeah, so that's definitely, maybe I need to have the fully, I need to qualify it with the uh, HTTP connect. That's what it needed, okay. Okay, so Mr. Droid. No, oh. forcing what? like. Did I write down all that stuff for no reason? Is it just gonna... That moment when you just feel like an idiot. It just magically brute forced it. Okay, so brute forcing in this case would have taken... I'm not gonna do the math. I can do the math, I won't do the math because it'll bore you, but it would take dramatically longer periods of time to brute force a, a password, especially one on a uh, server that you don't control and is not on your local network and it's not your local machine because it's network latency, there's going to be a timeout, it's going to say you've guessed too many times. Not to mention, even if you have the best case scenario and you're able to offline crack it, it's going to take you sometimes on the order of years, actual years, using the best computers to try and brute force if somebody's got a sufficiently um, high entropy password. This one, let's see what is this? Three, oh, three, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight, uh, okay, so that one wouldn't take too terribly long, but again, this is not an offline, this is an online hack. Um, all right. So we're just gonna write down one, five, six, two, five, four, twenty-four dot one zero one. Username, password, okay? Okay, fine. with our data, which is 3825454546. So I'm guessing that's his password. 3825454546, okay. P colon slash slash.
Where's the login? Did it, is it his mail that I've got to log into? No, it's hacklife.com. Maybe if I type in, okay. feel kind of stupid having to do this again, but if now I can't do it. What the what? So that should have worked. Okay. So this would be indicative of a server locking as they see um, failed attempts to them. So eh, I'll give him some credit. It's sure if I don't think that was the intended, um, I don't think that was the intended uh, outcome. Open a term, oh, pfft. okay. One fifty six, two fifty four, twenty four, one oh one. Yeah, connect. Okay. Generically just connect. Sure. One fifty six dot two five four dot twenty four dot one oh one. Oh, username password. So this is actually accurate in terms of being similar to what an SSH command would be. Because you type in SSH IP username at or Depending on which version of SSH, it would be SSH user at IP address, and they would prompt for the password. Um, username is, I'm guessing, Tom Atom 402 439. Oh, and password. Sorry, I'm just used to a somewhat realistic set up where it would prompt you for that instead of having you put it on the command terminal, which would be very bad because then it shows up in your history. Now send me photos. Use mail transfer account, photos cat 3 heyocom Okay, I'm gonna copy and paste that. Now send me photos, use mail transfer account Photos, cat three. Okay, but what photos? Um, is it saying that's the command? Use mail transfer. Oh, it's literally giving me the exact command I need to put in. Okay. I mean, that's kind of like, you know, that's, it's kind of like SCP, but not really because it's an email. I don't know. Well done. See you later. Don't forget to clean logs. But then it doesn't let me clean the logs. What is this? Blasphemy. Sometime later. All right. So, already this version of it is a lot better. Um, in fairness of the last game, I was given this one about 30 minutes as well. Um, I would say, let's go to the iPad here. And so, in terms of what Hack Me 1 got right, and We'll see that here. Paste. Hack me. Hack me two. This one uh, still didn't have real commands. Um, the scenarios were real. 
the time frame to shells. Also needed some time. N needed it needed to be a little bit more, mm, a, little, a little bit more in depth. Um, I'm going to put another category in here. We're going to call um, note taking or um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not note taking. Um, Attention to detail. So in the terms of the intention to detail, um, I think I think they did a good job with their attention to detail on this one. So and, and the last one, I would still mark it as a, a negative um, because this one had a little more emphasis on it. Um, all in all, me, I'm gonna give this one a lukewarm. Um, let's just make that maybe a lukewarm. Uh, gosh, let's say four out of ten. So marginally better, um, not not super realistic. Um, but eh, it's, it's all right. It is what it is. All right. So yeah, just do shut down, shut down on the uh, virtual system that they've got set up here. Hack me is in the, the can. All right. So for you guys, what would you say is a game that you want to be want me to look at. Uh, I can also look at movies. It'd be a little bit trickier to do with those because um, I'd have to find specific spots in the movies and, and clip those out. Otherwise, I risk uh, getting into some copyright issues. So I have to uh, kind of focus on specific segments. So um, if it's a movie, I'd need the exact time that in the movie where the hacking occurs, allegedly. Um, and we can take a look at that. Um, but yeah, for video games, more than willing to look at more video games. Love it. Um, I love the challenge of a good hacking game. And I will say that uh, a good hacking game was Hacknet. It was actually kind of passably good. Um, but um, yeah, if you think guys think of anything else, by all means, please in the comments, Drop a, an idea for what games you'd like me to review or what movies you'd like me for, to review. But yeah, um, I, think, I think that's about it for today. Yeah, so we got all of our objectives knocked out. Well, um, yeah, thank you for stopping by and I look forward to seeing you guys on Thursday for Guy Fox Day. All right, thank you very much. See you guys later.